How's it going, Northwest Green Boys? It is the end of July. Uh, we just made a really big trade for Anthony Rizzo, and it is time to start pushing both for the 500 record and maybe for a division lead, if not for a chance at the wild card. We do have a couple of series against the Yankees, so Rizzo will get a chance to uh, go up against his former team, both at Yankee Stadium and at home. Uh, we'll play the Angels and the Rangers, and who knows, maybe the Angels... Maybe even we get to the A's. It all depends on how many critical situations we have in this game. But first, we're going to go through and do a few contract extensions because some of these guys definitely deserve them. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who gets uh, contract extensions right away. We'll wait for a few of them. Uh, but there's a few that are going to be obvious for me. Paul Seawald has saved us so many games, so we will make him an offer. Uh, he's 31 years old. Uh, you know, we'll give him four years. I think that that makes sense. Maybe three if we can get away with it. Uh, his uh, uh, expected per year goes down if we offer him just three years. So we'll go with that and we will try to take as much money away from him as possible. And we're going to front load it as well. Um, just uh, try to have that work well for us. And although maybe we could find a better closer in the future, he is going to have a role as our closer on this team. That'll allow us to offer him a little bit less money. Um, he's looking for $4 million a year. Let's just go, off, go ahead and offer him a little less than $3 million a year. Thinks he's worth more than that. That's fair. How about 3.2? Well, we're just going to go up until he accepts. Um, hopefully, we get him at less than 4 a year. There we go. So, first contract extension done. And the other one that we're going to do right away is Mitch Hanniger because this guy, 15 home runs on the season, and they have come at really important times. He's 31 years old. Uh, payout structure, again, we're going to try to front load it. We want to take as much uh, of our cap early this season uh, in, you know, the next couple of seasons. And then that way, when maybe we're a little bit better, some of our young players are looking good. We have more room both to pay them and also to maybe pay for another star to come to this team. Uh, he wants five years really bad. So we are going to offer him that five years. Uh, we'll make his base salary a little bit lower, which is good news for us. He wants 5.6 a year. Try to offer him 5.3, but I think we were going to have to offer him near that 5.6. So 27.7 million. We're almost there. 28 million. 28 and 28.3. Come on. We're, we're giving you hundreds of thousands of dollars because you are, drive such a hard bargain. 29 million for five years. Goodness. Is he going to ask for uh, too much? 6 million a year? Like... We could make him uh, considered a star on the team, but I don't know if we're willing to go that far. 29.9 million. 30 million. There we go. Goodness. 30 million for five years. That's a lot to spend on Mitch Hanniger, but I think he's earned it this season. We have a lot of other contract extensions to do, but we will likely do a lot of those uh, off screen because I don't want to spend the whole episode talking about contract extensions. So let's play some baseball. Uh, we are on a winning streak, I think. Five games? Six-game winning streak. We just beat Houston 6-5. Anthony Rizzo with a three-run homer in his first game as a Seattle Mariner. We'll see if we can continue that as the Angels are interested in offering us a trade. Uh, Magnuris Sierra. I don't know how to say that for Asher Wojciechowski. I, these are hard names. <laughs> it is the 25-year-old B potential 70 overall center fielder. Second best center fielder on their roster. Uh, he's a terrible batter. He's a pretty solid fielder, but I just don't know if we can do that. We need fielders. Um, what do we have at center field? Billy Hamilton is going to be gone, but we have Julio Rodriguez behind that. Uh, four years younger, two overall lower. He's definitely, he's a better batter. He's pretty solid in the outfield. So this is almost certainly going to be a no. Especially because I don't want to get rid of any of our pitching depth. Uh, Asher is not great. 33 years old. Uh, we might do this just because he's 33 years old. He is on fire. How's he doing this year? Um, no innings pitched. Uh, he hasn't done a single thing this year. He is uh, AAA. I guess we need to look at his AAA stats. <laughs> uh, how is he doing AAA? 2.0 ERA, 1.08 whip. I don't mind that. Uh, 3.4 war. He's doing well uh, down in the minors. Uh, but he's 33. Do we try to pick up maybe a decent prospect? We will have to spend $50,000 to do it. Our budget will hurt a little bit. Our pitching depth, I think it's okay. We're going to, we're going to accept this trade. 
I just feel like, I don't know, young guy, young player with good potential, uh, relatively cheap. Why not bring him in? And now we can see what we can do. Losing the first game in this Yankees series on the road, 0-3. Losing the second one, 4-7. And losing the third. We get swept on the road by the Yankees. That's pretty brutal. Um, can we win a game? Well, Paul Seawald, we just extended his contract. Maybe he can get a save with Mike Trout up to the plate. Seven to six, top of the ninth, no outs. We don't want to have Trout just walk us off. Fishman can be a little bit scary sometimes, but we get him with a strike on the four seamer. Let's go with the low outside slider for pitch number two. You've got him swing it out in front of it. If we can get rid of uh, Trout early, that's huge. In the three spot, trying to pitch him outside. Man, kind of left that in a good spot, but he just missed. So strike out one for Paul Seawald. He has been great all season long. It's honestly a little bit surprising as Shohei Otani will come up to the plate as the cleanup hitter. Strike high in the zone for uh, the first pitch. Our closer of the future trying to get it done. Doesn't get him to swing at the outside slider. That's ball one. Now the 1-1 one, one count. Deal him another high fastball. Hopefully we keep it high. And we caught the zone. That is a that's a very fortunate call. 1-2. Otani certainly not going to be happy about that. Low fastball. Again, we're just getting it right on the edge of the zone. Umpire's really helping us out there. And he goes down looking. Didn't even need much of a frame job on that one. Ump just kind of in our corner. We know he's pitching it outside or pretty pretty big strike zone here jared wash comes up he's got a double uh in an rbi definitely don't want to let him get back on base i'm fairly certain walsh is a quick guy ball outside this is uh this has been interesting how about the low inside slider oh he put that up that's a base hit tracking back landing at the wall lewis fields it and eh, kyle's not gonna get it there so should have been a stand-up double. He slid in anyways. And that uh, brings Justin up to the plate with a runner in scoring position. I would rather not have to bat at all today. Good strike swinging at the slider. Puts him in an 0-1 count, and we're just going to pitch around the zone. The ump has been very favorable. Swings on the fastball and misses to make it 0-2. And the Angels are down to their final strike of the game. And he swings and misses. So three strikeouts for Paul Seawald. He does give up a hit. But that's not... Uh, it doesn't matter. He gets another save. Bunch of strikeouts. That's fantastic. It's a good way to end the losing streak. Nick Margavichis gets the win. And Anthony Rizzo went 3 for 4 on the day with a home run. That is great news. 2-7 loss to the Angels. 5-12 loss. You know, at least they're at the top of the division. So, like, they're a team that we can expect to lose to. But that hurts. Six games back of 500. And a chance to walk it off against the Yankees. Bottom of the ninth with one out. You already know it's going to be Mitch Hanniger up to bat. And he has done this all season long. 0 for 4 on the day. A double ties this and forces extra innings. Maybe even a single if it gets into the outfield. And a home run walks it off. First pitch outside slider. 84 miles an hour for ball one. Got to wait for our pitch here. We are going against uh, lefty pitcher. So that'll be pretty good. Wait for our pitch. Spot it and drive it home. Mitch Hanniger pushes it down the left field line and it is gone for a walk-off two-run home run. Oh my goodness. Only Mitch Hanniger's getting that. And that's only going out in that part of the field. That was uh, just over the wall, 345 feet. That is fantastic. First at bat of the day for me. And somehow I actually get on a pitch and drive it out for a home run. Oh, that feels good. Good win. And uh, man, every single one of those that we get just helping to push us towards 500. That's the goal for the season. Oh, that, that felt good. Mitch Hanniger, I don't know how he continues to do it. Hopefully he can keep up that production for uh, the rest of this new contract. Glad we extended him. It works out well. 6-5 win against the Yankees at home. 3-2 win against the Yankees at home. So we win this series. Can we reverse the shutout that they had against us? No. 1-3 loss gets pinned on Logan Gilbert. That's kind of a shame. Uh, still feeling okay. How about uh, this series? On the road uh, against Texas. 8-1 win. And now a chance to uh, force extra innings here. Charlie Culberson at the plate with Corey Seager on second. 
no outs in the bottom of the ninth. And this is a Rangers team that has consistently uh, made life difficult for us. First pitch uh, bounced off the mound, out number one, but it moved Sager to third. So uh, Anthony Mizewich, again, I, man, last names are so hard for me in baseball. Uh, six pitches in. Is he going to get walked off here? Uh, Sack fly wins it. Nick Solak in here as the pinch hitter, I believe, they put in in this spot. As we go slider curve for strike one. If we do anything, we just can't allow a ball to get out of the infield. Four-seamer just misses for ball one. So a 1-1 one, one count. We'll keep throwing these fastballs. That one misses low for ball two. A walk here isn't the worst idea. We're definitely going to pitch around him here. Anything to set up a double play would be nice, but we left it a little bit too low. And that is a walk-off. It always happens if Seager is involved in the play and we're playing the Rangers, they're going to win the game. Uh, we just can't seem to beat these guys. Maybe should have gone with the intentional walk there, but uh, this is just a good hit. Nothing that we could do there. Oh, that's a bummer. Maybe we should have brought in Paul Sewald to try and save that one. Uh, well, for the series win, we get it 5-3, and now we're back against the Angels. So I guess we can see what we're doing. Robbie Ray, 7-11 on his record so far this season, but just a 3.26 ERA. Can he get some wins on the road against the Angels? This is a 6-2 win. Logan Gilbert needs a win, and he's got a chance if Paul Sewald can just save it for him against Mike Trout in the bottom of the ninth. It is 32 saves for Paul Seawald, but it is Mike Trout who's two for three on the day. A couple of singles. He's batting 272 on the season with 24 home runs. Can we pitch around him? Can we get some strikeouts? Last time we faced the Angels, it was three strikeouts to get the save for Paul Seawald. Can we do it again here? I wouldn't mind if Mike just wanted to ground it to first every single time, but that's fine. Two strikes, pitch three coming. Low fastball, swung on and missed, and Mike Trout is struck out once again. This feels like deja vu. Shohei Otani up to bat in the four spot, pushes it. Kyle Lewis gets to it. Oh, was worried that, that was going to be a double, maybe even a triple if he missed it. But there's out number two very quickly. And with just four pitches thrown, it's up to Anthony Rendon to try and save the Angels down a run. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth. The slider on the first pitch gets pushed to Kyle Lewis in the left field. That's an easy fly out for him. And it's a five pitch save for Fall Seawald. And we get another win. I think that wins us the series uh, on the road. So that's really, really good news. Logan Gilbert gets a win there. I think that puts him 500 on the season, helping the team to get to 500 as well. Dom T. Williams, Mitch Haniger, and Dylan Moore all with home runs in the game. As uh, we obviously needed that with the five runs scored. Can we sweep them? The division the, the leaders on the road. It's a 3-2 win for Chris Flexen. That is fantastic. And things are starting to turn around here in the month of August. <laughs> well, this is an interesting entry that I've never seen before. Uh, Logan Gilbert getting benched for a few days, almost a week, for a broken nail. Uh, Billy Hamilton, collarbone update. He's still going to be gone for about another month. Let's use this opportunity to extend another contract. Harry Ford, our prospect catcher, 19 years old, already 74 overall. Good fielding. His blocking's a 76. He's not the best bat, but we can work on that. I mean, you give him 10 years in the majors. He certainly is going to be better, and we can get him for so cheap. He doesn't want a three-year deal. Uh, he would want 600 a year if we offered that, so that's going to be a no-go. We'll just try to lock him in for two years. Obviously front-loaded, and we're going to try to get him as cheap as possible. 130k? All right, how about 150k? <laughs> that's definitely worth it for us to lock down him for another couple years. He'll only be 21 by the time that contract is up, so... Uh, things are he, uh, he's in a really good spot Marco Gonzalez at the A's we are one game back of 500 can we get there yes 6-1 the win and now Tuki Toussaint can we see him get a win in the new uniform well it's gonna be up to Drew Steckenrider to push it to extra innings it's Steven Vote, I believe is how you pronounce it up to base bottom of the ninth with a runner on second and no outs 
Uh, if this was the Rangers, I would be calling it a loss already. But because it's the A's, I think we have a good chance as the circle change drops for strike number one. 216 on the season with runners in scoring position for Fotis. He swings and misses for strike two. Can we get him really swinging in the dirt? The curve. Oh, that was a little bit higher than I wanted. He's able to foul it off to stay alive. And we're just going to keep pitching, trying to keep it low or outside or at the very edge of the zone. The last thing we want is for him to be able to poke one free. A little circle change in a tough spot. We get him swinging and missing. Drew Steckenrider gets the first out. Obviously, even if we get out of this inning, we still have to be able to score a run ourselves. But extra inning rules should help as the fastball goes in 96 miles an hour for strike number one. How about a little curveball? Well, that misses, but we got him looking at it, and it was a perfect throw, so we'll take it. 1-1 one, one the count, go into the high inside fastball. He's going to look at that one as well, and we're just going to go right back to it. In the 1-2 count, place it a little bit higher. Try to mess with him, swing and a miss for out number two. Watch the first one, certainly wasn't comfortable swinging, so the second one, when he's forced to swing, we put it in a tough spot. And Man, these fastballs just blowing past all the A's players right now. 0-1 oh, count, just throw another fastball fouled off 0-2 oh, very quickly can we get him swinging at the curveball to end it no he's gonna lift it but it's just a little pop up into right field no problem for Mitch Hanniger even though he's looking up into the sun and that'll push us to extra innings with a chance to get to 500 on the season you know this game is fiction uh because there are way too many fans in A's game Anthony Rizzo 0 for 3 on the day up to bat with uh Eugenio Suarez on second as the extra innings runner watching the first pitch fastball for strike one Guerra he pitched through the ninth and uh I don't know a 90 mile an hour fastball I feel confident here that one's going to be a curveball low and outside for ball one you like we can just kind of wait for our pitch that's a 78 mile an hour curve so slow pitches should be able to tee up if we get the right one and that was not the right one. The curveball, yeah. I thought he was going back to the uh, the fastball, but uh, swung way over it way early. That puts us in a one-two count. Don't want to strike out. Oh, my goodness. I feel like I need to put my glasses on right now. And so glasses are on in the two-two count. Trying to watch as uh, I don't want to strike out. And we drive the high fastball into the uh, right field. It's going to run Eugenio Suarez home. That was an awkward pitch to swing out. Definitely a ball, but Rizzo gets it to the ground. And he's going to drive a run home. So we take the lead in the top of the 10th with no outs. Danny Jimenez coming in to pitch. Tom Murphy, we've seen him hit a couple of home runs, although he's 0 for 2 on the day. And the first pitch is a four-seamer outside for ball one. You know, I don't know if it's necessarily the best deal that could have ever been made, but Anthony Rizzo seems to be paying off for us. The hitting is really good. Defense is going to be better than what we had. Sorry to say it, but Ty France was just kind of struggling, unlike in real life, as they are just pitching around us. I don't know if Jimenez can find the strike zone. Everything way outside. It's a quickly a 3-0 count. I'm tempted to swing on this, but we're just going to watch it because... If we can draw that walk and get Rizzo into scoring position, that can make things really big for Kelnick. 3-1, he does find it. Unless this is juicy, we're not swinging. It wasn't juicy enough. Full count with no out to Danny Jimenez. Pitch number six of the at-bat. And we had to swing at it. Fouling it off to stay alive. Definitely a little bit early, has me worried. Still 3-2. And again, we had to swing at it. That was a curveball right at the edge of the zone, and it's going to be for a double play. Just didn't quite get the barrel on it to drive it with enough speed to get it into the outfield, so that's a bit of a shame. A's maybe staying alive. Two outs now. Kelnick drives it. He left that fastball right in the middle of the zone. There's no chance we don't hit a home run there. Two-run lead in the top of the 10th. I don't know why. I felt so confident with Kelnick coming up to the bat against a righty pitcher. That one is gone. Kelnick's 19th of the season. Man, that is beautiful. Jesse Winker now. Oh, I thought we had it. He left the curveball a little bit high. This one's pushing back towards the wall, and it's all off the wall. Okay. Uh, you know, that had a better chance to go out than I expected. 400 feet to deep center field. Winker gets a double. I don't know if that was a good first pitch to swing on, kind of outside curveball, but we 
drove it at 100 mile an hour exit velocity. And now Dylan Moore, well, he's going to push one deep left field. Not deep enough. 64 power doesn't quite push it. Good contact in terms of PCI placement and swing timing, but not enough as we do take a two-run lead into the bottom of the 10th. We do have Paul Seawald warming up in the bullpen, but uh, I'm going to let Drew Steckenrider run this one out. Maybe a little bit long. He's going to be pitching three innings here, uh, but I think that we can allow that. The way that he's pitched and the way that the A's have uh, batted against it is we can go 12-6 curve. Quickly 0-2 count here, and he's going to foul that one off just barely. Catcher wants us to go back to the same pitch. I think that's foolish. We get this strikeout. That is fantastic. Man on second base has 88 speed. So a steal could be in order. Uh, and I have headphones on. So uh, the way that I have to record, I can't really hear the game. So if he takes off running, it might be a free base for him. Again, two fastballs early in the count. Leads to uh, an 0-2 count, and we left that curveball way up in the zone, but he pops it up for out number two. All too easy for Suarez to get under that one. It's going to be up to Seth Brown to save his team here. Two outs in the bottom of the 10th. Down two runs. A home run guarantees them extra innings, but he's just looking to get on base and stay alive. Went through the circle change a little bit low there. Let's go with a high fastball. Completely changed the batter's eye. He's going to swing on and foul off that one for a 1-2 count. And now again, down to the final strike for the A's. <sighs> Good eye to watch the curveball fall outside. 2-2, two -two, back to the fastball. Trying to pitch it a little bit outside, and they're going to ring him up. I don't know if they say that he went on that or what. That looked like a good check swing to me. Uh, I'm not going to complain. Steckenrider comes in, gets the job done. And we are a 500 team on the season. You know, the way that the last couple of months went, I didn't know if we would get there. But just a huge rally here in the month of August, turning it on at the right time, maybe making the right trades as Anthony Rizzo uh, got us going with a nice little base hit. And then the home run from Jared Kalnick. That was, uh, that was a thing of beauty. 63 and 62 wait were we 500 before that <laughs> we're above 500 now I, <laughs> uh, that just shows where my head's at today uh we are above 500 six games back of the angels how are we looking in the wild card standing three games back of the astros uh and the yankees for one of those wild card spots this could be close the rays seem like they are out into uh a pretty big lead there. Does that mean, yeah, the Blue Jays are obliterating 82 and 43. Uh, and the Rays at 75 wins are oh, six and a half games back. That's crazy. Well, we got one final game for this episode against Oakland. Will we play it? Yes. A chance for Robbie Ray to win it here. It is a complete game shutout in the making, but he's got runners on first and second with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. If we can get out of this jam, I'll let him pitch the ninth inning. But that's a big if for me right now. Man, they're claiming 16,000 fans at an Oakland game. Uh, I don't see it. First two pitches outside for balls. Sheldon Noisy watching it go to a 2-0 count. And now this is getting a little bit frightening. We don't want to walk the bases loaded. Now it's a 2-1. Let's go with another fastball. High in the zone. Maybe a little bit too high, and it's driven out to the left field. Left center field. Frazier running back deep on the grass, but that's going to be enough for the put out. Oh, my goodness. Whew, I wasn't confident there. <laughs> that was not a good pitch, but thankfully he does not get the three-run homer, and Robbie Ray keeps the shutout alive. Austin Pruitt will come into pitch for this ninth inning, and it's Anthony Rizzo up to bat. Three outs to try and extend this lead a little bit, but if we get the shutout, it doesn't matter. First pitch, got a swing on that. Perfect, perfect for Rizzo. That's driving out, gonna bounce off the wall. Just too tall of the wall. Man, he's barely gonna make a double out of that. He's out. Oh my gosh, I thought they got him. Just the seventh double of the year for Rizzo. A little bit too slow. Man, 16 degree launch angle really does hurt. We're gonna move him to uh, third. That was uh, a bad swing on the first pitch with Kalnick there. I just can't believe that that wasn't a home run. Eugenio Suarez, the third baseman, coming in. One out, top of the ninth with a runner in scoring position. I think if I'm Oakland, you maybe think about walking him. 
because um, anything into the outfield might be enough to bring Rizzo home. He is slow, but the sack fly could do it, and they are pitching around him right now, 2-0. The thing is that, uh, you know, if they leave one over the plate, I am not scared to swing right now. I feel like I'm very confident in our batting, and there it is, but we popped it up. Oh, we just got under it. That was looking like a beautiful fastball to swing on, but it's going to be out number two. Well, that'll bring up Harry Ford, another man who we have extended the contract of this season. And I'm swinging at the first pitch, a fastball low and away, fouled off. The catcher does not have great batting. Again, he's only 19, but uh, low power. And it's quickly 0-2. Got me whiffing with the curveball. There's an 8-mile-an-hour tailwind, by the way. I don't know if the 37 power is enough to drive anything, but this one, if it gets down in the left field, it does, and that's going to be an RBI. So the single enough to get it done, and the power actually kind of helped us because it just looped it into the left field. And that'll make it a two-run advantage. That is so massive. Brings about the top of the order, and Dylan Moore, who's 0 for 3 on the day. Pruitt dealing one that bounces through the gap over his head for another single, and it moves forward to second. <laughs> Not great hitting, but if the top of the order can just keep the inning alive, maybe we can get to the meat and potatoes. And, well, it's going to be over. <laughs> Another bad first pitch swing. Good timing, but we just got on top of the slider and ground it to first. But uh, the RBI for Harry Ford, pretty important. Every extra run into the bottom of the ninth here will be very useful. So Robbie Ray with a chance at a complete game shutout. He has 108 pitches on the day. I mean, realistically, it would not be... Uh, stupid to pull him out. It, in fact, it might be stupid to keep him in. Is that's going to be out number one? Dylan Moore, good fielding on the grounder. It's not like this is a perfect game or a no hitter, but uh, complete game shutout. Pretty important. I don't know. Uh, we'll show him that we trust him to finish all the innings, and we'll let him throw as many pitches as he needs to. As that was a terrible pitch, but we get Stephen Piscotti to swing at it, and we'll throw him a little slider here in the one and one count. And that one just misses the zone. How about a little high fastball? Ooh, that was a great pitch. Got him swinging and missing. And we're just now getting the alert that Robbie Ray's tired. So I guess we can keep going for a little bit as that one is a slider down the left field line, but it'll land foul. Keeps it alive two and two. We could probably pitch him around a little bit. Oh, the high fastball doesn't quite get low enough. Good eye from Piscotti's. He gets a full count here. I don't mind walking him. I'd rather walk him than give up a hit, but well, he's going to do us a favor and just pop it to center field, and Frazier's going to be under that for out number two. Just one man standing in the way of a complete game shutout now for Robbie Ray, and it's the nine hole as Shay, I don't know how to say his last name, as typical, Langliers, something like that, uh, fouls it off for strike one. High inside fastball, and he's going to pop that one to Winker. And just like that, the complete game shutout is completed, and we will now be two games above 500. What a form that we have been on recently. The trades have really made the difference, I think, but just having everybody play into their potential, we're pretty injury-free right now. This feels good. It's four hits and six walks in the complete game shutout as Robbie Ray goes 9 of 11 now. So he's getting close to 500. We'll see him through that day, but that is going to do it for this episode in terms of games. We will extend one more contract just for the heck of it. Joe Adele, the man we traded the Angels for early in the season. Uh, he's 22, a potential speedster. Not the best bat again, but uh, that's not what worries us. I would love to give him three years, but he doesn't want that. So instead, we're going to offer him 650 a year. Front loaded, of course. Uh, how about uh, 700 a year? <laughs> He'll sign that contract. Uh, let's do one more. Tatram, another uh, high potential young guy. I guess he's 24 getting up there, but 66 overall. Front loaded three. Let's go with a three year deal. Offer him 666. How about 700 a year? He wants more 733? 750 a year? How much do you want? Okay, we'll do it. 766000 a year for three years of Taylor Trammell. Uh, it's worth it just because he's a high potential guy. We still have a lot of work to do, but man, let's just take a look at what happened today because it started bad. We went 0-3, getting swept by the Yankees uh, on the road. 
And then we we started the episode one in five, and then just uh, coming back from there, we are on a massive, what is that, seven game winning streak at the moment with series against uh, a bad Washington, uh, 500 Cleveland, and then a above 500 Detroit coming up to finish off the month. So choosing the right time of the year to catch on fire, August 22nd, but unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button. Helps these videos get seen by more people. And it's always a risk doing MLB content on a football channel. And then uh, subscribe if you haven't already and head down to the comments. I'm curious to know if you guys were as confident as I was when Mitch Hanniger first came up to the plate on that first home run that we hit to walk it off. I feel like this might have been one of our better batting episodes, just kind of connecting with most of the good pitches that were in the zone. We hit some home runs. We hit some nice doubles, some good RBI singles. Just a good batting day all around. After you've done all that, though, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord. But all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Northwest Green Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.